Hey folks, I hope everyone's doing well at home. Past me forgot to intro this video, so now present me has to do it. In this next section, we'll be talking about file hosting apps. Take it away, past me! I'll start off with Google Drive, which uh, is available on the web, on the Google Play Store, and the iOS App Store. At my school, they gave us a proper account and use other Google services as well. So like Google Classroom, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, you get the picture. For pros, it was very, very helpful and very convenient. If everyone has a Google account, it's very easy to share files and communicate and collaborate on projects together. Even if they don't, you can still share files with them. You can either do that by downloading the file or going through their email. Files, since they're safe onto a cloud, can be accessed anywhere, which makes working on the go very easy. Easy. I don't even need to bring my laptop, sometimes I can just work from my phone or even borrow someone else's computer and I can work from there. Through Google Drive, you can also work together with people very well and all at the same time. It also has a simple interface and it's easy to use and easy to get used to. For myself, I found it very useful right before presentations to do a quick revision of it, just look through the slides, make sure I'm not surprised when I get up onto the podium to talk. It gives you free 15 gigabytes of storage or unlimited if your school invests in the EDU G Suite, which is what my school did. It also comes with add-ons that can help with IB work. For instance, my favorite is EasyBib, which basically just makes your bibliography once you just put in the links. Finally, they have really cool fonts. This may be very minor, but to me it was great. It made my notes more interesting. Some of these fonts are not available in the Microsoft Office apps, but only on the Google apps. As for cons, I found it a little annoying that I had to download the app to edit on my phone. For instance, if I were to edit a slides file, I would have to download the slides app in order to edit on my phone instead of just doing it from the Google Drive app. However, viewing is fine from the Google Drive app. You don't have to download anything if you just want to view. All the files are stored in the cloud and if you want offline access, you have to go through the settings and choose offline access or else you won't be able to edit offline. The editing features themselves aren't as detailed and as flexible as Microsoft Office applications. And if you're more used to Microsoft Pro Programs, the Google programs may seem a little simple and dumbed down, but it's nothing you couldn't get used to. As a comparison to Microsoft, I feel like it is quite a good alternative. It does pretty much the same things as Microsoft Office. You have to pay a single dime for it for 15 gigabytes. Sounds like a deal to me. Another file sharing app is Dropbox. It's available on the iOS App Store, on Google Play Store, the Microsoft Store, and on the web. It's a file hosting app, which means that it does not have its own series of editing apps. However, they recently put out a new feature called Dropbox Paper, where it's basically a word processor that's even more simplified than Google Docs. For the pros, I found that files can easily be shared through uploading them to Dropbox. By using Dropbox Paper, anyone is able to edit the file as long as they have the URL, which may work to your benefit or your detriment. If you're already used to the Microsoft Office applications, Dropbox has a Office Online integration, which means that you can edit Microsoft files online through Dropbox. As for cons, the free version only gives you 2 gigabytes of storage, Though you can earn extra space by getting other people to sign up for Dropbox. Now let's talk about calendar and planning apps. Of course, whatever calendar app you already have in your phone is completely fine. These are just some alternatives that you may prefer. First off, we have Google Calendar, which is available on the Google Play Store, the iOS App Store, and on the web. The pros are it will automatically add events uh, from Gmail to your calendar. There's an autocomplete function to aid in event creation. You will suggest times, locations, even people if you have your contacts. So it has a clean and easy to use interface. It also allows for easy collaboration and scheduling between people. It works well with Google Keep and reminders on Google Keep. It's also completely free to use. The cons that I have seen people complain about are that it is difficult to connect with third party uh, calendars, which means that it finds difficulty in connecting with other calendars and sometimes duplicate events are added in. This may not be a deal breaker for many, but there's only one reminder limited to each event. The second app on this list is Time Blocks, which is available on Google Play Store, the iOS App Store, and as a website. I personally use this app and I find it very aesthetically pleasing. It has different themes for customization. It's easy to use. It modifies your schedule easily by dragging and dropping. It allows for the option to create multiple different color-coded calendars for different projects or timelines. It also synchronizes easily with other calendars. As for the cons, there are many other good features that are blocked by a paywall, like file attachment, interval marker, which is useful for long-term projects like classes or study plans, task lists and subtasks, habit management, and date countdown. You are also only allowed two alerts or reminders for each event, which may be a deal breaker for some. That's all the apps! I hope this was helpful in some way, shape, or form, and good luck out there. Catch y'all next time.